ドクターガオーなんちゃって。Suire is the perfect example of a pay to win fighter. She's the type of person to just throw money at a problem and hoping it would solve it. All because of one reason and one reason only. She is filthy rich. How rich, you might ask? Well, that's up to your imagination. If you want a baseline, then maybe check out her paradox simulation. Anyway, behind all the glamour and riches, Swire is an incredible fighter, at least in lore. In this video, I want to shine some light on this ferocious little feline and check out what she has to offer on the battlefield. Swire is a 5 star instructor guard. This guard archetype has lower DPS capabilities because they are mainly used for support other melee operators. Hence why they usually have higher defense in exchange for lower attack and HP. In addition to that, all instructor guards gain 120% attack when the enemy is blocked by another operator. Another thing to know is that instructor guards heavily rely on their talent to buff other operators. In the case of Swire, with melee combat guidance, Swire provides attack buffs to melee allies in a 3x3 tile configuration where each operator within her range will have their attack increased by a certain percentage, depending on her potentials. The attack buff caps at 12% when Swire is at pot 5. Note that Swire is not affected by this buff, only the operators surrounding her. Both of Swire's skills are essentially buffs that improve on her talent. Skill 1, Command and Dispatch, increases the range of her talent while also doubling its effectiveness. The range increases further when the skill is at level 7, almost making a complete square. Since the talent has double the effectiveness, and assuming that Swire is at pot 5, which means each operator in Swire's range will have their attack increased by 24%. The more operators you stack inside Swire's range, the higher the overall attack bonus. If there are 2 operators, the total will be 48%. 3 operators will equal to 72% and so on. The skill has a duration of 35 seconds with a 40 second cooldown. And in my opinion, 40 seconds is not too long, especially when compared to other instructor guards such as Wishlash and Doberman. One thing I have to say about this skill is the range. It's absolutely massive and I think it's a little bit overkill since range operators do not benefit from the buff. Investing into M3 will grant shorter cooldown and longer duration. It's pretty standard but it may prove to be useful in certain situations. On the surface, cooperative combat seems way superior than command and dispatch. And this skill is sort of the opposite to skill 1. The range stays at 3x3 but the talent has triple the effect. And on top of that, Swire increases her attack by 50% or 80% at M3. All those stats seems very appealing, isn't it? Until you realize that the skill is the offensive charging type, and it takes 45 SP to activate it. And this leads to two problems. Number one, offensive charging skill is inconsistent, and the more SP it takes to activate the skill, the worse it gets. Hence why operators that have this type of skill have very low SP costs ranging between 3 to 5 SP. 45, this is at mastery 3 by the way, is ridiculously high. And if you want to know how long it takes, be my guess. Basically, Swire has to attack the enemies 45 times. Number 2. Because of how inconsistent it is to charge this skill, Swire needs to be deployed in the front lines, which contradicts her role as a support guard who mainly sits towards the back. It also doesn't help that Swire has very low HP than most guards and she can easily be wiped out. The duration of this skill is 30 seconds and for the amount of time it takes to charge it, it's not worth it. However, there are some workarounds. The first one is to bring Chen along with Swire to take advantage of Chen's talent which grants one skill point for every 4 seconds to all allies that have an attack recovery or defense recovery skill. 
The second but also similar way is to bring along battery operators such as Warfarin, Liscarm, and Telopsis. I've covered Warfarin and Telopsis a while ago, so you might want to check those out after this video. Number three is to use Swire's module, which I will talk about it in the next section. As I said before, Swire takes a long time to charge her skill. However, her module fixed this problem by making Swire generate 1 SP every 3 seconds when there is an ally within the 3x3 area surrounding her. This upgrade is available starting at module level 2, but I don't have a concrete evidence of its effectiveness since this module upgrade is not yet available in global at the time of recording. If you're planning to use Swire extensively in the future, which is probably unlikely, this module upgrade is game changing, at least for her. And now for the ultimate question, should you build Swire? My answer to that, and it applies to all instructor guards and operators alike, is yes, but only if you are interested in niche operators and like to experiment with different kinds of strategies. New players may not see the benefit of recruiting instructor guards other than being an extra body count since their DPS capabilities is kind of lacking in early levels, especially for Swire because you have to deal with her terrible skill up time before a lot of investments. But don't let me stop you. If you enjoy niche operators, by all means go for it. I'm just waiting for the day Hypergriff release her summer skin whenever that will be. So what do you think of Swire? Is it worth the investment? Let me know in the comments below, and I'll see you next time.